Hey everyone! So we're on YouTube now and Facebook. Okay, so today we are talking about how to stop your neighbor's dogs from barking. Oh, now come on, they just want to be social with each other. Yeah. <laughs> so, we live in a cul-de-sac. And Rachel says without the use of a 22. Rachel, that's we were so tempted. tempted. <laughs> so to put things into perspective, we live on a cul-de-sac and behind us we have six houses. And between those six houses there are 14 dogs. Well, let me phrase that. There were 14 dogs. Now there is... Till the 22. Oh, sorry. <laughs> now there's 12 dogs, because two of the dogs moved away. Although three of those 14 dogs were not a problem. The rest were a problem. <laughs> and so today I'm going to tell you how I solved the neighbor's dog barking problem. And it was bad. It was really bad. <laughs> And we've had this problem, let's see, we've lived in 10 different houses since we've been married. And we have used this solution on at least four houses. We didn't discover it early enough, unfortunately. No, we wish we would have discovered it earlier for several other sh houses. <laughs> um, but because we live in the suburbs, so to speak, and we have neighbors and we have to deal with them. We wanted to find a solution that would work to stop the neighbors' dogs from barking. And still be at peace with the neighbors. And not put us in jail. <laughs> so, um, you know, we would rather live in the country. If you have some country land you want to donate to us, we'll take it. But <laughs> we can't afford it. So we are stuck in the suburbs for right now and we do have to deal with neighbors. Um, which can be a really good thing at some times and a really bad thing at other times. So, what we did was we bought this um, item, if you can put a link up for them, right here. See this cute little birdhouse? Well, this cute little birdhouse <laughs> really annoys the neighbor's dogs when they bark. <laughs> so, what it is, let's see, I, oops. I think I forgot to put the batteries in here. Can you hear that? Let me do that again. Yep, you can hear it. Testing, one, two, three. Oops. Oh, it's... Okay. So, what that does is when the dogs bark, it sends off a sonic... Um, a sonic pitch that dogs hate and then it trains them to stop barking when they hear that sound so wait did we try some other something else first this wasn't well, the first thing we tried right this isn't the first one but the first one that we no, got I mean the first any kind of solution we tried oh so the first solution that we tried actually was we put some rocks in a pepsi can let me your pepsi can so we put it didn't some, have Pepsi in it. <laughs> yeah, so we put some rocks in a can, and we taped the top. Whenever we were outside, we would throw that can of rocks at the dog that never stopped barking at us. And I'm a stay-at-home mom, and after about 30 minutes, I can't stand it. And people are leaving their dogs out 12 hours a day outside, and they never stop barking. And I mean... Never. <laughs> Mike thought I was exaggerating until he stayed home a couple of days and he was like, okay, we have to figure out a solution for this. This is insane. Well, and even when it was just one dog, when you first bought one of these things, it was just one dog. But it was real deep voiced dog that would go woo 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 all the time, constantly for like 10 hours in a row. It never stopped. Never. And, yeah, and we tried the putting rocks in a can and kind of throwing it on the ground near where the dog was and it it would kind of freak out the dog for a second, and the dog would go right back to it. So we tried that, and I don't know, did we try anything else? Didn't we try a dog whistle? Oh, we tried a dog whistle, and that didn't work. So finally, Mike was like, there has got to be a better solution. We can't be the only people with this problem. So he started looking up, and we got 
Um, we got a different kind than this one several years ago, and it was $100. This one here is only 30 bucks, and it's the best 30 bucks I've ever spent in my life. And I, yeah. No, that's fine. I'm just going to explain one more time what the theory is on how it works. I Go ahead. Talk yeah, about so it. when I looked it up, I, I looked, and what they said is that um, these things... The one we originally got was different than this, but the idea is that the dog barks and this listens and hears them, and then it makes a sound that the dog really hates every time they bark. So the idea is the dog barks and then it hears a nasty sound and it thinks, I made that sound by barking. So then it won't bark unless there's, I mean, if there's a catastrophe and there's a robber and somebody's trying to hurt the master, then the dog will still go mm -hmm. crazy. Yeah. But if the dog's just barking like most of the time they do when the neighbors when leave them out bored. all day long when they're bored, it will stop them. And it's actually worked really well it's for us. It's worked really well. And I will say that I have called on the neighbors and reported them. And that kind of helped with a couple of the neighbors. A couple of the neighbors, when they got the warning letter from the animal control, they did bring their dogs in. But a couple of the another couple of the neighbors were just, they didn't believe their dog was having this problem. And we did not talk to all the neighbors because we don't know them all. So we didn't know how they would react or Some whatever. of them haven't reacted well to minor things before. Yeah. So, yeah, we were thinking we'd rather just deal with the problem in a way that they don't have to be involved. I mean, it would be nice if yeah. we could involve them. We were friends with them, closer friends. But. Yeah. And, you know, they would, like, there's two huskies and two other something or another, or huskies, something or another, that are between the fence and... We overheard one person say, oh, well, they're just having a fun chat with the neighbor dogs. For four hours? No. Not stop. <laughs> you know, and it's to the point where we couldn't even, you know, I'm a huge gardener. And Mike was out taking pictures of my flowers. of barking and we would have a party and or I mean we would have a party we would have a fire pit outside with some neighbors and the dogs would just be going and going and going because the neighbors the the people with the barking dogs would have a party and they would kick their dogs outside and their dogs would just bark for hours on end we couldn't even enjoy ourselves in our own yard so I did finally call and start reporting because it was bad. And I will tell you, um, I would call and report them because most times it is anonymous. They don't take your name or number. They have never taken my name. And I've probably called 20 to 25 times this year trying to get all these dogs stopped. And I'm not the only one that's calling because one of the people, uh, the neighbors said, or he said that he told them, okay, there's been eight reports on these dogs. You need to get it under control. And I, I know I was only four of them. So <laughs> I'm not the only one who's having this issue. Other people are. And so... And some people like to ever say I would report every day. Poor dog, he's left outside all the time. You know, I do feel like people say they're dog lovers. But then they go to work and leave the dog out in the 100 degree weather all day long. And then they think it's not barking because I'm not home to hear it. Yeah. And, you know, are you really a dog lover if you're going to leave your dog out to be barking in distress all day long? Yeah. And people don't believe their dogs are doing this. They truly don't think they are because they're at work. Or like one person said that they were a stay-at-home parent and, and they never heard their dog barking. Well, they went on to say they were working in the basement, so they never heard their dogs barking. But they were constantly. And um, so... Yeah, it just drives me crazy. So, we bought this, and yeah, it hacks me off. I had to buy, <laughs> so Mike's going to put some pictures up here to show you our setup, because we have six houses, and we have three that are really bad. So, we have one...
Sorry, everyone. We just realized somebody said every time you lose, every time we show a picture, you lose, we lose audio, and I think I know why. Okay. And uh, so sorry. Okay, Mr. Tech Guy here got it figured out. So let me explain all those pictures I just showed you that you couldn't hear me talking. So what I did was I put, I didn't, I couldn't get the... I couldn't get the birdhouse, the sonic birdhouse, high enough to get over the fence because it has to go over the fence, and we have the white picket vinyl fence. So what I did was I put it on a chair. No, no, no. I put it on it. I have a table, and then I have a chair on the table, and then I have one of my huge pots, my big, I don't know, 10, 15 gallon pots sitting on the chair, and then I have the shepherd's hook. <laughs> With the dog thing hanging from the shepherd's hook because we don't have any trees. This is Colorado, and we are not known for having trees down here. And so um, we're in a new neighborhood, and, and our trees aren't big enough. And so that is how I got both of those up high enough to go over the fence. So they're hanging off the shepherd's hooks. And then my shed, I hung it on the corner of my shed for the other dog. So that's how I got it up in to the, um, up about, or up above the fence line. Now, as I was saying when I showed you the pictures of my flowers, I can't even go out and garden because it is so bad. The barking just never stops when I'm in my own yard. And it really hacks me that I can't, um, I can't even go into my own backyard and garden. And someone said, let's see, Deborah said, why don't you use a pole? Because we don't have a pole on hand right now. And probably we're going to have to put something more permitted in. This was just a temporary fix to get it up because we've got so much other stuff going on to go dig a hole, put a pole in the ground and all that. Um, but yeah, it's, it's crazy. So we got this sonic dog barking thing and it really does help. Now, there are some negative reviews on Amazon and we put a link in there to it, which is an affiliate link. So if you purchase using that, we'll get like three cents or something. <laughs> it won't cost you anymore, but. <laughs> yeah, I think we're up to $2 for the month in our affiliate sales on Amazon. So that's a big money maker for us. Um, but we do have, we can say though, what we've noticed, there are a few limitations. Yeah. Like if the dogs bark incessantly, then you have to change the batteries a lot. Yeah. The more often that it works, the more, the faster it's going to use the batteries. But they do bark more frequently at first. And then as they keep hearing it, they slow down. So you may go through a lot of batteries the first two to three weeks. But then after that, they slow down. And I think some of the negative reviews that people had were because they didn't, realize that and other thing that we noticed is sometimes if there's like three or more dogs in the same yard and they're barking all together then one dog is hearing it when another dog barks and so that dog doesn't get the clue that i'm barking and it's mm -hmm. causing this so it works best if there's like one dog in each location that's the primary barker but it it's worked really well and it does take just so you know it you need to leave it up a full two to three weeks for it really to kick in and you may be saying, okay, I'm losing my mind, but I can't. And Rebecca says, if it bothers you, leave. We can't leave. No, I we don't think she's... We cannot afford I, I to leave, so... I don't think she's talking about us. I think she's talking about... Oh, I'm sorry, Charles. Rebecca. I think she's talking about Oh, Charles. okay. Sorry. <laughs> but that's part of our problem. We... I apologize, Rebecca. But that is part of our problem. We would leave because it's that bad. I mean, it is that bad that we would move, but we cannot afford to move, and we can't leave the state of Colorado right now with our um, custody with our niece. So, but it doesn't matter everywhere we yeah gone in the last few houses. Exactly. But there are some questions because there was one uh, person who said, "Oh, Lil says as someone who has barky dogs, I don't like it any more than you do, but I'm at a loss as to getting them to stop." Advice is welcome. Well, this this works really good in your own yard, also. <laughs> Well, and in your house. But if so. it's your dog, there are ways that you can train them. Like the dog whistle thing that we had doesn't work for us because the dog is 100 feet away somewhere else and doesn't really make the connection. But some of the dog training techniques that you might use for other things, if it's your own dog, uh, that you might use for other things will work 
for the barking and and that the dog whistles do work really well for that they don't work well if it's someone else's dog but uh they actually the dog whistles had some information explaining on how to train your dog not to bark uh, but you can way. use these also but these for will that. help for your yeah. dog too so if you have dogs that bark you can put these inside or out and they have indoor only ones that aren't a birdhouse so you don't have a weird birdhouse just sitting in your living room but they have ones that um are a little bit let me go here just a second i'll show you which one um let me see if i can find mark mike see this one right here can you give that to her um and this other one works oh, the indoor one okay. yeah and it's the same thing it it'll work for most dogs but there are some dogs that don't listen to it so occasionally you know they'll yeah, there was another thing, too, that I forgot to mention is that uh, there are mostly the settings are silent settings, but they one thing that we learned is that if they're large dogs, there's a setting that makes a little bit of noise. It's not real loud, but we can you can hear it. Um, and sometimes those are uh, for large dogs. They said that the one that's not silent sometimes works better. Uh -huh. So that's kind of something you might want to consider. Um, and what else was there? Uh, if it's, I'm sorry, I've got too many things happening here. Sorry. Um, okay, so, um, so this is Mike's putting a link on there right now for the indoor bark control, and this is an affiliate link also. But um, so let's see if there's any other questions that we quite a few. Uh, yeah, Tammy. Tammy says my dogs aren't barkers unless someone's here they don't know, and that's cool because then yeah. generally they'll and. Just so you know, if it's the winds blowing, there's one dog that barks when the wind's blowing or barks when we're having storms or something like that. I'm okay with that. I totally get that they're stressed from that. I'm just talking about, you know, that kind of thing. Um, are they high pitched? Yes, they are. And my son can hear it, but it's out in the yard. So well, he's not hearing it all the time. Karen asked, are they high pitched? Then she says, my daughter's dogs howl like crazy if they hear sirens. Oh, no. So it's not like a mm -hmm. siren that's going to make them howl. It's, no. They bark and then it just goes, eh, and yeah. it sound right back to them in a, in a sound that dogs hate a lot more than we do, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um, and so it's not high pitched in the sense that it would cause them to howl. One thing, these will not stop the dogs from howling like if an ambulance goes by because mm -hmm. then they're kind of in pain. Yeah. From that. So. Um, okay. So. <laughs> not sure why we're freezing here. So it looks like we're frozen. Um, okay. So anyway, that is pretty much what works for us. Um, YouTube says, let's see, let's just go with YouTube. YouTube says, cities won't allow, let's see, seashells and palm trees says, oh, that's a cute name, <laughs> seashells and palm trees, I like that. Um, cities won't allow chickens, but nonstop barking is so much more annoying. Yeah, the same people who have the dogs have chickens, and their chickens aren't near as annoying as the dogs are. <laughs> I have to agree with you with that. Um, Debbie says, I had this problem a few years back. I was really surprised how upsetting it was to me. They barked all day and night and it made me so angry. Yeah. Well, it's kind I of mean, like they're scratching a chalkboard. That's the kind of way it feels to mm -hmm. hear that all day long. Yeah. Um. Well, and the first time it happened when we got that, none of the neighbors had dogs and then a bunch of new people came and all of them brought dogs and completely surrounded us. And Colorado is dog crazy. I mean, it's nuts here. They take them into the grocery store when they need to just be leaving them home. It's not good, but you know, what can you do? So people here don't have just one dog. They have four dogs and it's just crazy. So anyway, um... All right, let's see. Is there any other questions on YouTube? Uh, let's take a quick look here. Um, yeah, just saying glad when they moved yeah. and I can hear you. They were driving you nuts. Oh, you know, we did have some other people that were asking um, uh, that lived in the country. And our problem with that is the range is only 100 feet or something. Yeah. So with when we lived in the country, we had to take it and put it on a chair all the way at the edge of our property line yeah. facing that dog. Yeah. When we lived in the country, we had two acres out in Kansas, and um, the lady behind us had four or five dogs that did the same thing. And so we just took a chair 
and moved it to the very edge of our property and lined it on the very edge of our property so that we were still within the 50 to 100 feet and it helped stop her dogs also. So you may have to get creative in putting it up and that kind of thing. But, you know, if you can get it over the fence and you can get a straight shot to the dogs, it 90% of the time it works. And I would say that for the 30 bucks, it's worth at least a try for your sanity. Um, because even after calling the city, um, what do they call city um, animal control people, it helped, but it didn't stop it all. And so... I was really started going crazy and had to figure out some solution. So anyway, I just wanted to share with you guys today. I know this is short. Um, also, don't forget, our books are on sale this week till tonight. 50% off. We have Dig Out of Debt, Quick and Easy Menus, Penny Pinch and Mama. Whoops, where'd it go? Boop. Mm, there it is. And Menus from Dining on a Dime. They end tonight, so it's 50% off. Um... We do have some more questions. Okay, okay. let me answer so some Sharon, questions. I think uh, you mentioned this to somebody else, but Sharon asked, will this work for my own dog out in our own backyard? He barks at blowing mm -hmm. leaves, birds, and neighbors. Yes, yes, it will. Yes, please especially, do that for your neighbors. <laughs> well, especially if he's the only dog in your yeah. yard that's barking. Yeah, it works great. Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> Deborah says, do you have to post pictures for deaf dogs? <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs> that's pretty funny. Yay. Um Kill two birds with one stone. The neighbor's oh, oh. <laughs> the neighbor's cat that poops in your yard. Take it and throw it in the yard with the dogs and bark. <laughs> there you go. That's a good one, yeah. Uh, let's see. Now maybe I can get some sleep and a bit of peace and quiet. Yes. Yes. And the main thing is uh, it works really, really well. But the couple things that we mentioned about the batteries and uh, sometimes the bigger dogs need the mm -hmm. one that has a little sound. And, and it does take two to three weeks to really kick in. Those are the things is, uh, you may have to... Um, you may have to kind of mm -hmm. test that a little. And you can always ask us if you're confused because yeah. we have a lot of experience with this. Um, and, uh, oh, shoot, it just went out of my head what I was going to say. It was something important. Let's see. I was talking about two to three weeks, sleeping, batteries. Oh, when the batteries die, you will notice because if they're chronic barkers, they'll start up again. So if, if they've stopped and then they're starting again, you're like, what is going on? Check your batteries. Yes, and Heather says, I for, totally forgot about this. So her dog, she says we use shock collars for our own dogs on the buzz setting mostly. She said we rarely have to shock them, mostly just vibration. Mm -hmm. So those, if you're worried about that hurting your dog, the shock collars are not, it's not like you're putting a, yeah. a massive amount of voltage. It's like a little buzz that mm -hmm. they get. Yeah. But you can also get, we had a citronella collar one time uh -huh. for our dog. Yeah. And that citronella collar... Um, it, he would bark and it would spray citronella smell and he hate dogs hate that smell mm -hmm. so when they bark and then they smell that they associate barking needlessly with that smell and people are like well that's humane to put a shock collar on the thing is is it's more humane to give them a little buzz and stop them from having a heart attack from barking for 10 to 12 hours than it is to let them just bark incessantly. I mean, to me, that's way more inhumane. So not only for the dog, but for everybody else. So, Yeah, Judy says we've had neighbors like that. The nighttime is worse. I don't know how those people sleep. Seriously, you want to go over and bang on the door and wake them up since you can't sleep. It's true. But un unfortunately, I think people in that, I think people that are like that just get used to hearing mm -hmm. it. And it's out in their backyard with the, like, we have one couple neighbor couple that they're nice to us and we can talk to them and we can kind of tell them stuff like that but at night sometimes when their baby is crying they'll just throw the dog out in this one side on the yard in a little pen well the pen is right under our bedroom window <laughs> and they can't hear it because they have a, a soundproof garage between that pen and the house so they think the problem is solved, but mm -hmm. it's more work. Yeah. It's worth. But this really helped with their dog especially because it's a little, yeah, it's kind of a mid-sized dog that uh, yaps a lot. Yeah. yeah. So let me see what else we have here. I was All looking right. back. Um, <laughs> Deborah said it's like people with whiny kids. They become noise deaf. Exactly, yes. yeah. And buy a big pack of batteries, Lizanne says at Costco. Yeah, I got some off of Amazon that were really cheap. And that's what I got. Um, and the cool thing about this, it doesn't hurt the dogs. 
It doesn't get you in a fight with your neighbors. Yes. It's just a, it's kind of really mm-hmm. helpful that way. Somebody yeah. else asked if it helps on whiny kids. Yeah. Aww. And Cheryl said, oh, poison worked well on my dog. Yeah, see, that's the whole point we're trying to avoid because that's just horrible when people, people do, do that. Stuff like and that. Well, there, because I, I had neighbors that had stuff happen to their dogs. I didn't want to say what it was because I didn't want to give anyone who might be super frustrated and yeah. unhinged any bad ideas. But Yeah, that's just, that's what we're trying to prevent here. And so if you get this sonic dog barker stopper, I don't know what it's, what's the official term, but um, it really... Uh, bark control. Bark control. <laughs> It really works well, and we do have a link down in the description below. Do we have any other questions on YouTube? Uh, well, actually, so we're still here. First of all, Sharon says, "Woohoo! Thanks for letting me know. Absolutely, let us know how they work yeah. for you." And um, Karen says, "Had a different brand, and it used to mess with my cordless phone." That's odd because oh, these are the ones that we huh. use aren't radio controlled. They're yeah. just they just listen for the sound and make a noise. So maybe it was a radio controlled one that yeah, I that don't you know at that time. Um, We've not had that problem here. Yeah, Sue, so the thing on shock collars is we actually tested it on ourselves. <laughs> yeah, and, we did. And it's it's not like it's it's not like a like a mat it's not like when you shock yourself plugging something in. It's more it's like It's like when you touch a nine volt battery. No, it's like when a bug is walking on your yeah. skin. That's kinda yeah. what it feels like. Yeah. And, and the dog barks and they feel that little tingly thing and, and it's or it's not probably quite as bad as if you yeah, yeah, if you lick a nine volt battery. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's not, you know, it's really, we tried it when we had a dog that had this problem, and it's really not that bad. And like I said, it's a lot better than them barking constantly, so. Yeah, and Mama Nachi says, I never had to go over the first level with a shot collar. It probably helped that I started when the dog was a puppy. Yeah. True. The, the younger you can start, and honestly, we put up with these neighbors for way too long. We, we, I've listened to this for three years and this, and we did ask the ones that we are, yeah. that we're friendly with just to be the ones we don't know that we know are moody. Yeah. <laughs> we decided maybe we should. So, you know, we, um, what was I going to say? We put up this, put up with this way too long. I should have done it three years ago at this house and I kept trying to be nice and I didn't want to call. And this year I was like, there's no way I'm dealing with this again. This is crazy. Something has to be done. So I started calling, and then I got the dog barkers. And, yeah, it irritates me that I have to spend money because my neighbors won't control their dog. Yeah, that really but hacks me But it's way more than worth it to It's way more than, yes. It is way worth it to keep the peace. So uh, And Ms. Home Management did uh, express that she says she thinks the, the color shock. Well, she says her friend put a shock color on the third level, which I, I guess that's a really mm. high level. Um, but the thing is, if you don't want to use a shock collar, you can certainly use, like I said, the citronella yeah. one, sprayed mm-hmm. something the dog but doesn't like this. But you can get these and use them for yourself. It doesn't have to be for the neighbors. And it's, wow, if you use it for yourself, it could be six feet away from the dog. Yeah, it should so be even just more set effective. one of these in your house where the dog frequently barks and do it, or outside, get one for inside and one for outside, and do it. Yeah, it, it really works. Um, Nifty Thrifty Bits asked about the cat. Keeping a cat out of his out of her fish pond. Fish. Um, you know, I've heard ammonia, if you spray ammonia or cayenne pepper around the area, that they will stay away. So you might try sprinkling cayenne pepper around there. I don't know. My I've never had a problem with my cats doing those kinds of things. What, so. what was the, there's something else that those cats don't like the smell of. And we were talking about that when we were trying to keep the cats out of our room. Some kind of an herb or something. Citrus. They it's, don't oh, like yeah. citrus. So there are citrus sprays that you can put around there. Um, you know, so those are a couple of things that might work. Um, let's see. <laughs> Deborah, I've noticed you haven't barked at all. <laughs> yeah, it's working on us. It's working great on us. Um, Melanie's so, asking what is it because she just got on. So we're talking about how to stop your neighbor's dog barking. And we have these bark controls that we used on our neighbor's dogs and are still using on our neighbor's dogs. And so they work really great, and we wanted to share with you guys because this can be a really bad problem for some people. So I totally get it. Um, yeah. So Liz Ann says, we asked our neighbors nicely. They yelled obscenities over the fence while kids in the backyard, and then our vehicle was mysteriously damaged. This is a much better option. Exactly. Yeah. Um, the neighbors that we called on anonymously, we didn't know. We don't know them very well. 
Some well, people they, do not react well when you tell them their animals are barking and they don't believe you. Mm-hmm. And so... And we've noticed with them that there are... They kind of were... Sometimes they were really nice about stuff and sometimes about the most small thing they would completely come unhinged. So we thought, better not deal with them on their dogs. And, and of course, they were the ones that, you know, when a lot of neighbors did complain about their dogs uh, to, to the uh, code enforcement guy... Uh, they their response was to get really angry yeah. and post things on. We have a neighborhood uh, uh, a neighborhood chat board, and people comment on there. Um, hmm. Aisha says Vix Vapora works on cats, might with dogs. I'm not sure for what. I don't know. Keeping them out, maybe. Hmm. Yes. So let's see. What else do we have on you? So let me, let me check the comments one more time here. Orange PL Sue Wilson says. Orange peel is good to keep cats away. So, yeah, you might do that. Um, let's see. <laughs> yeah, Driz says if my wife's taser gun work. Yeah, I would say that. Probably, but I wouldn't suggest a little, it. That's probably too intense. <laughs> yeah, definitely not. <laughs> yeah. Um, and you can make your own citrus um, smelly stuff by soaking citrus peels in vinegar or alcohol or oil and spraying that around if you want to make your own just put um, orange pills in there or lemon pills in there so now terry says my neighbor has one it doesn't work at all and i think that's probably the same issue either the batteries yeah the batteries or... might not be working or there are some dogs that it doesn't work for and make sure you have it on so there's different settings here so can you see test low medium and then high um, make sure it's on high, make sure you have fresh batteries, but there are some dogs that occasionally it won't work for, but we've found in the four or so houses that we've had to use it at, that it has worked for all of them except one. So, yeah. And it is there, like I said, some of them have, they usually have more than one setting and the silent setting is apparently not always effective with big dogs mm-hmm. and so there's a setting that you can barely hear it sounds like something it sounds like something didn't get oiled some piece of equipment in the yard yeah. when it goes off for a second and that setting works much better for the big dogs that don't respond mm-hmm. to the other one yeah and so like i said this you can use this on your dogs just put it in your house or put it in your yard and it will work for your dogs too it doesn't have to be for your neighbor's dogs it's just that my dog does not bark and i don't have a problem with it so You know, and it is, for me, it's pointed towards the neighbor's houses. So for our dog, it's not a problem because the sound is going that direction instead of in our yard. So it doesn't bother our dog with it. And our dog never barks unless, if we put him outside and we forget he's out there, he'll stand at the door and bark once. Mm -hmm. And then he'll wait for a while. and then Yeah, so um, anyway. uh, Um, Yeah, Lori again says, I need it for my dogs, and it would definitely work much better for yeah. your own dogs. Uh, Melanie, this is about $30. So, and then you need to buy batteries. But the $30 is way worth your sanity. And like I said, we have six houses with 12 dogs. And so we had to buy four of them because we had to put them all over our yard to get them to stop. Because once one would start, the next one would bark, the next one would bark, the next one would bark, and we were losing our minds. So... Absolutely. Anyway, that's what's wrong with me. Okay, well. All right. Well, guys. Hey, Big Bear Homestead. Good to see you and Cheeky Saver. All right. Might get some rain. Yeah, Big Bear. I wasn't sure. I wanted to know what your advice was for barking dogs. <laughs> <laughs> we can just imagine. <laughs> so. All right. So catch us tomorrow at 430. Don't forget all of our print books except dining are on sale for 50% off. When they're gone, they're gone. We aren't. We aren't printing anymore um these are all going to only be available in ebook so when they're gone they're gone and that sale ends tonight so please share click like comment thumbs up everything to support us because we really need your support and we appreciate it and visit livingonadime.com because that's our website too and if if you guys want a topic on some particular thing let us know because we're we're mostly we're doing a lot of saving money around the house and food things 
Um, then we're just kind of hit and miss trying other things that have helped us. Like this dog barking thing really was a major improvement in our lives. Major. So that's why Tar wanted to share that. But... Saved us $10,000 in moving costs. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Nadine says, I may have to try your idea for the barking dog behind us and the howling dog down the block. Now, it will it should help the barking dog, but if the howling dog is really far away, that could be. Yeah. Because I think the range is, it says you can look. If you order one, you want to look to see what it says on the instructions, um, what the range is. But it's like 100 feet or it might be more for some. But again, we had we were living out in the country one time and we'd have to put it on a chair at the edge mm -hmm. of our property to get that dog to stop. But it works. And call your, your town's code enforcement or animal control. If you cannot, if it doesn't work, call them. Most places will do it anonymously and you may have to call six or eight times, but... Um, yeah, call them. Vicki, you can pick these up on Amazon. Mike put a link in the description there. He'll oh, put another oh, one. Again. And um, they're only 30 bucks. I mean, it's And the cool thing on Amazon handy. is if, if you try it for a while and you just can't get it to work. You can they're usually pretty good about returning it. So, yeah. But mostly it takes a little... If, if you struggle with it, it, there are a few of those things we mentioned. Yeah. That. Heather, yes, it works for whining and howling also. Um, so, Melanie wants to know recipes with frozen berries other than jams and pies. Well, we just freeze them and eat them. So, yeah, we'll, we'll maybe do a, do a, we do smoothies and stuff, so we'll do a video on that. Yeah. Um, and you can buy the books at livingonadime.com. Click on the store, or if you're on your phone, click on, there's a line that says click here for our books, and you can get them there. And I'll paste the link and in there on Facebook. Mike's putting that in there. And let's see, any last questions before we go? Um, uh, Charlene. Or Charlene? Carly? Cr I can't, Curlene, I think. Curlene? I can't see. The Have the neighbors commented about the dogs not barking? No. No, no they haven't. Mm -hmm. And there is the one family that has three dogs that when they bark all together, then it's less effective. So their dogs bark occasionally still, but mostly... They're very, very significantly reduced, and they nobody said anything. I think they just figure maybe the dog's deciding to be nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. So. Um, okay. So have a great day night, and we will see you guys tomorrow. Oh, I'm not doing soap this evening. Mike has an internet how to make money on the internet conference, so we can make money. Yeah, how on do we do the that? <laughs> After we did that other video the other day. <laughs> so he's doing a marketing conference to um, see if we can increase our income. Um, and so I won't be doing the soaping this evening. So sorry about that. It'll probably be Friday or next week sometime um, before this I get on again. Un, this is the taking it out of the mold? Yeah. Uh, Nifty 3D Bits asked how did the soap turn out? Um, I haven't taken it out of the mold yet. It's stuck because my fragrance was I don't know what my fragrance did, but it made it too sticky. So I have it in the freezer now. And as soon as we're done, well, you want to run over and grab it real quick since we're on? What am I grabbing? My soap out of the freezer. Let me see if I can get it out real quick since you guys want to see it. Um, I don't know if um, if I can get it out of the mold. It was stuck in the mold, and sometimes if you put it in the freezer, it will pop out. So Mike's running over to the freezer here. Let's see if we can. Okay, so when there's a barking dog, you take your soap and you... <laughs> you whack it on the head. Okay, so let me see if I can get it out. If you keep barking, I'm going to wash there. your mouth Okay, so soap. see how it released? It finally released. So let me see if I can ugh, get it out here. And then I don't have my cutter, though, so you won't really be able to see. Oh, well... This fragrance is Cherry Mist from Rustic Essentials, and I would not use it. It's horrible. Um, okay, well, I got it out of the mold. Go grab me the knife real quick, the big butcher knife. I'll see if I can cut a piece here real quick. See how it kind of stuck on the side here? That was because my um, fragrance, it, it made it really hard to set up. So... Hold on, give me one second. Let me see if I can <laughs> cut a piece here. Uh, um, while we're while you're cutting that, um, oh, who said it? Uh, Nadine said she just bought was it ten pounds of Bear Lake raspberries? 
There you go. So that turned out pretty nice. Um, looks like I got a little bit of soap on the top that I need to scrape off there. That's for my hands right now. See, you can see my hands. This is not normal. It shouldn't be this sticky. So it was this fragrance, but I'm going to see if I can get it cut. And sorry, the and cool. lighting is kind of blown out a little bit. Yeah. Because but it's dark behind us. That's what the inside looks like. So there you go. That's how it turned out, but it's a mess. I won't. Cherry Mist from Rustic Essentials, do not use it. It's a mess. So, so I know this doesn't have anything to do with the dogs, but Nadine said, I just picked up 14 pounds of Bear Lake raspberries. I would love to get your ideas. Oh, just I could freeze them. I mean, I would just oh, yeah. freeze them, just wash them and throw them in a freezer bag and freeze them. And then you can make pies and jams and use them for smoothies and stuff later. And the freezing doesn't work better to like lay them out on a yeah. oven thing and freeze them so they don't stick yeah. all together. What I do is I lay them on a... Um, lay them on a cookie sheet and put them in the freezer and freeze them individually and then put them in freezer bags. So I would do that. Yeah. So or <laughs> somebody was asking for the, Oh yeah. Karen's asking for the link for the towels behind you. Oh you yeah. Know? Okay. Go here. Type in flower stack dish towels, Mary. Okay. We'll get you that link just a second here. Did Mike's, you want to see what else? They are yeah. Asking? Let me see. Scroll down. Oops. Okay, just a second. You're on the wrong one. Yeah. Scroll, 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 scroll. Holding, Keep going. Holding, holding. Keep going. We're looking for the towels. Where did they go? Should we look for them later? Okay. Well, we'll have to get it. I'll put it in the link for you. I'll go back through and see if I can. I can't find all the all the comments to answer them when we're done. I think Facebook does something with them. I don't know, but. Yes, Nadine says, I'm thinking about freezing them in two cup portions. And Melanie mm -hmm. asks how to prevent them from turning to mush. That's that's the freezing well, them separately, right? Yeah, you freeze them separately, but they don't. I mean, freeze any fruit, it always turns to mush. So that's why you use them in smoothies or jam or. or... So. And same way, put them on a chop and freeze them on. It's, it's like cherries. Yeah, but it does not work. It? Yeah, it looks like a looks like a, I don't know what a slice of cherry cake or something I guess. So, all right. Well, have a good day and check in the comments below for the sour flower sack dish towels. Michael will put that link in there um, as soon as the it should be posted in I don't know twenty or thirty minutes. So we'll put the link down there. And yeah, we'll add it to both Facebook and YouTube. Yep. So, so open up Karen's name so we can send it to her. Karen, we're going to send you a private message with that, okay? All right. So, all right, guys, have a good night, and we will see you tomorrow at 4.30 Mountain Time and on the Homestead Network on Saturday night at 6 p.m. Mountain. Awesome. Have a great night. Have an awesome night.